When do I peek? The world's a blur. People bustling. Not a single care for a writer's woes, this creative dearth. Oh, for a muse to bring a thought to birth. But wait, a sight. A baker with a tray. Fresh bread so golden chases away the gray. Mood away. Perhaps a cup of tea and a warm scone will set my mind free. Back to the quill, a flicker of light, inspiration sparkled by a bready delight. The poem flows and takes its flight. Writer's block banish, thanks to the baker's might. Now time for some interactive fun. Hey, it's Kirk. This is still dumb test late. I'm still Kirk, as I just said. Um, and we're still eating our cake in two. Um, this is part three of a redo of an old idea I had from an old episode where I said, um, you can have your cake and eat it in two, which turned into a story. Um, kind of a love story, kind of a buddy cop love story between two bakers who are in a relationship, but they're in an older relationship and they're struggling and they have a reality TV show going on. Um, where one takes all the credit and is kind of the star of the show, but one does all the work and is kind of behind the scenes. And that's going to build up to a frustration point. And the story is leading up to a live bake-off contest between all these reality show um, stars and bakery shops, like custom bakery shops. Oh, yeah. Also, the bakery shop that they're running is um, specializes in erotic cakes. Um, that's also part of the story that I came up with. Um, but I haven't done an episode in a while because I've been uh, uh, hit by a little bit of the writer's block. Um, not really writer's block. Writer's block is just the easiest term, like just a lack of creativity. Um, I'll say just getting caught up in the everyday life and not wanting to spend time doing creative things like I am right now and thinking creatively. I haven't been in that mood set. Unfortunately, that is like a struggle to get out of. Um, sometimes you just have to. You just have to create something um, to get yourself in that creative mind space. And hopefully that's where I'm in now because I don't want to take too many breaks. Um, being consistent is always key with many things. Um, who knows what success will be for this podcast, but I know consistency is always key. Which leads to nothing, but back to the show because this is still dumb test late um like i said we're still having our cake and eating it and eating and eating it into um the opening opening soliloquy was uh ai generated from i used to it used to be called bard but now they changed it to gemini that's google's um version of a chat bot because a while ago i stopped using the chat gbt um chat bot for reasons um, but that's what they came up with, with the prompt I was given. What, what I gave them was a poem about a writer's block because that was kind of the theme of me getting back into this episode is trying to get over my writer's block and back into the creative space um, that I've been with these episodes. And I'm rambling. That's part of writer's block, but no. So, like I said, I came up with like the story of the bakers. Um, the last episode, I'm pretty sure I said A&E Bakery. Or a &E, yeah, a and &E Bakery. I said that wasn't going to be the name of the bakery. Or A&E's Bakeries, or something like that. Um, I changed the names, because I originally had the names of the two bakers as Jerry and George. Because I was initially inspired by Jerry and George's relationship from Seinfeld. But I ended up changing their names. Um, Jerry, the dominant character who's the star of the show but doesn't really do any work, is Andre. And the George character who's the actual, like artist and baker and the creative one and the relationship and the bakery um is now named Eldon. Yeah. Um and then I left on the I don't say cliffhanger, but on the note on their relationship. Um because that was part of the catalyst. I think that's why I ended up the catalyst as as I go through the book Save the Cat and how to set up a screenplay. Um but 
like I said, the writer's block kind of drained me of that. Um, I think I caught everything up. The bake off at the end of the that's gonna be the end of the movie, the big crescendo is the bake off. Um yeah. So the thing I've been thinking of that part of this story is how do I write a backstory? Because you have to there has to be some kind of backstory um for you to fall for this hero. In this case, the hero is Eldon. You want to make the um, audience fall for him, root for him, want him to succeed. Um, exactly what that what success would be to him is kind of up in the air. If it's him coming to grips with he needs to end this relationship with Eldon that he's been in for a while. Does he need to leave the bakery altogether and start off on his own? Basically unknown because the world doesn't really know him as a star baker. They know Andre as the star baker, who's the star of the reality show. So if he leaves, he basically leaves with nothing. And so that's the thing I was thinking, well, what keeps them together? And it made me think of um, the show The Office, which The Office, um, you probably don't know if you're listening to this. That's like that is the origin of me wanting to do a podcast. My first podcast I did was um, Stop Watching The Office, where I try to force myself to stop watching The Office and watch other things. But it made me think of the uh, old episode of The Office where Michael Scott has, um, there's a drug test coming up because the white found like a joint in the parking lot. And he like makes everyone do um, random drug tests and Michael Scott is scared that he has something in his system because he went to a concert. So he asked the white to give him pee because he knows the white has clean pee. Um, Jim figures out what's going on. Um, and at the, some, I wonder if it's the end of something because the white, the story goes, the white gives him the pee and then quits his job as the, um, as a volunteer sheriff or something like that because he has, you know, this honor that goes on along with the white. Um, and Jim is doing his voiceover where he's saying, what does the white get from that relationship? Um, because he has this really like subservient relationship to Michael Scott because Michael Scott is in charge. So I was like, in my story, it kind of parallels. What does Eldon get out of the relationship between Andre by staying behind the scenes? Um, staying as like, you know, his... Because there's a big age, I don't want to say big, there's an age difference where Andre is older than Eldon, um, but that goes along with the backstory um, for their relationship outside the bakery. Um, so I was thinking, what does Eldon get out of this? And I was thinking about that will lead into the backstory because I would say Eldon has this, who's the hero? Eldon is our hero. He has kind of this tragic backstory where he comes from like parents who were divorced and really didn't support him. And um, with him, with him being, you know, gay and being a baker, it was a struggle with him having to hide who he really was and who he wanted to be and his likes. Like his father was very masculine, but his father was like very demanding and his mom really wasn't supportive of him. So he had to hide the fact that he was one gay and that he wanted to eventually be a baker. Um, so he had this talent that he had to hide and he has this side of him being gay of who he was. He probably had to hide from his parents too. He was probably a very closeted kid growing up. He doesn't really get out onto his own until he gets to culinary school. He moves out, you know, he does the big thing of moving out from his hometown. He gets away from his family who wasn't supportive and he had to hide from, and you know, it's tough growing up where you go to high school or something, you have to hide being you know, gay or something like that. So he goes to like a big city and he goes to a culinary school or a patisserie school or whatever. And that's where he meets Andre. And Andre is the first person that gives him um, that attention and kind of like lets him open up and be who he is. So Eldon, that's like his first love of, you know, being in this world of the being a baker, which he's always wanted and being, you know, out as a gay person, he falls for Andre. That's why he keeps the secret of Andre, the reality store, the star. Um, Andre doesn't really do any baking. He's just the face man for this, you know, erotic cake baker in this reality show. Eldon is all the work. So that's where his backstory comes from. That's why he persists this secret and keeps it going because he has this love for Eldon that if you really look at it, it may not be 
the healthiest love, but it's like the only love he knows. It's the only acceptance he's received from somebody in the world of bakery and another man that accepts him for who he is. So that's why he keeps that relationship going, that secret going. That's what he gets out of that relationship. Um, also, I was thinking of the backstory, but for Andre, I mean, him and Eldon's backstory go hand in hand, but him, you know, Eldon being the hero, Andre kind of being the villain because Andre's taking advantage of Eldon. I don't know how much of a backstory I would go into his, but I would say that it's going to be told through him um, being a teacher at this school where he meets Eldon. That's why I said the age difference and that he's kind of stuck in a rut at this school where he wants to be taken like serious as a baker and have his own bake shop and be, you know, world renowned. But he's stuck in this dead end job of being a baker where he kind of looks down have to teach these new kids how to bake and all this stuff. And he's like one of those st- not stuck up, but those like <laughs> really down on their luck teachers that you find in movies and stuff. But then he finds Eldon and he sees all this stuff in Eldon. But Eldon is really shy and he's really reserved. So Andre, you know puts the confidence in Eldon and gets him to maybe to show his artistry as a baker, but Eldon struggles. So Andre comes to him and says, you know, I can be the outgoing side of, you know, your artistry and we could start this uh, bakery shop together. So they have this codependent relationship where Eldon is so fearful of, you know, losing the love he has from Andre and losing, you know, um, that confidence, like he feels like he can't go out on his own because he has nothing, is no notoriety and everything. And Eldon, I'm sorry, Andre is taking advantage of that. He knows that he knows Eldon is younger and less experienced than him. And, and you know, Andre is his name is, you know, big, the biggest um, in lights with the shop, even though they run the shop together. Like I said, Andre is the face man. So that's his villainous background. Um To him, he doesn't feel like he's the villain. He's just, he feels like he's giving Eldon something. And in return, he's getting what he wants out of it. But Eldon doesn't, because like Eldon is younger and and experienced, he doesn't realize the full extent. So that's where like the story will go. Because in Save the Cat, that's the debate, which I'm kind of leaning towards. The debate is happening in Eldon's head. Um, And it goes along with, that episode of The Office, um, the part where Jim is doing a voiceover of like, what does Dwight get out of that relationship between by being like subservient to Michael? Um, you see Dwight as Jim is giving that voice over him going back and forth and defi- deciding if he's going to give the clean pee to Mike, which he eventually does. The debate is going to happen in Eldon's head where he has to overcome his lack of confidence and his shyness and it's reservedness and that feeling of this is good enough or this is good as it gets. So he has to basically jump out of, you know, I mean, take a leap of faith on himself. That's the bait that's going on in Eldon's head because he has to give up everything. He he's going to lose the man, you know, who, who he's ever loved and shown him, you know, um, basically he was able to live that life of a gay man because he's never done that before. And this bakery and all this excitement with this, with Andre, um, he has to debate with himself if that's worth leaving because he knows if he leaves the bakery, the a e bakery, he leaves the reality show, he's going to have nothing. Um, he's going to be starting over from scratch. And he, But that's his debate. He has to take that leap of faith on himself. And then there could be, you know, the story the i think i mentioned this in the previous episode with rival bakeries they could be enticing him to leave and say hey come work with us or we can do this together and you know eldon has that debate going on his head he he has to take a risk or he has to keep doing this for the person he loves and the bakery he loves because he loves the people he works with at the bakery too and all this stuff but um he knows deep down inside that not not necessarily that he's being taken advantage of, but he knows that he can he he's the true artist. 
but he needs to like get over all the things that are clouding that um basically stand on his own that will be Elden's debate and you'll the audience that's another reason oh that's another extension or way the audience can fall for and root for uh the hero Elden to find his success in the end um they see the debate that's going on and him being torn apart um that's going to come from the backstory you see him and Andre and their relationship their codependent relationship how it's been built up and what it's um kind of stagnating is now is them just Elden living the lie and Andre living the fame but Elden being the hero you want the audience to root for him what is he going to do so hopefully I can answer that question what is Elden going to do or how the story is going to go um that's my hero quest to fully expand upon this story um yeah so I, I wanted to get this episode out because I missed, I think it's been two weeks that I really didn't want to stagnate on my own journey. Um, I wanted to keep this creative mindset going, but thanks for listening with me. Um, this is still dumb. Test late was still eating the cake. We're still having it in two, even though this is part three, but um, hopefully we'll keep it going and you'll hear from me soon. I have a couple other ideas that, um, for like totally different ideas that I've had that I've written down and set aside. I'm not going to touch those until I fully feel like I've done enough with this story. Um, but yeah, but thanks for listening. Um, hopefully you hear from me soon. I, I promise no more two week breaks, but thanks again. Bye.